Hi friends, I'm Mike Malcolm and this is the year 2022 in review. January of 2022 started off with us getting used to the new Our Lady of Grace Center, that parish hall, the kitchen, youth space, meeting rooms, and all of the above. We were still moving in and getting everything situated and getting used to it, but it was serving us well. The COVID protocols were still kind of in place and we canceled coffee and donuts and the women's New Year's retreat, those were moved to February. They took place in February and were excellent. The parish also had a parish mission featuring Father John Yurok of Wichita, who spoke for three nights as we prepared for Lent. Father Yurok is a good friend of Father Jack Gleason, our pastor at the time. March was interesting. Pope Francis consecrated Russia and the Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Also that month, longtime principal at the School of St. Mary, Maureen Clements, died, was buried. We had a funeral mass for her here at the Church of St. Mary. Father Vince also had surgery to repair a blood vessel that was weak somewhere next to his heart. That was a great cause of concern for the parish. The highlight of April was the Easter Vigil, this explosion of joy, during which we received a lot of people into the church through the sacrament of baptism or through profession of faith. In May, the church hired Mr. Garrett Schilling as the new youth minister. It hired Mr. Alan Bryan as the new AV technician to help families as they show memorial videos in the new parish hall. We also put up some Paterino statues in the baptismal font area of the church. They look gorgeous. In June, major changes came to the Church of St. Mary because it was announced that Father Jack Gleason, the longtime pastor, would become the new pastor of the Church of St. Bernard in Tulsa, and Father Stuart Crethcor, pastor of St. Bridget in Tahlequah, would become the new pastor of the Church of St. Mary. Appropriate parties were celebrated, the legacy of Father Jack as we wished him farewell, and joy and excitement as we welcomed Father Stuart to the parish. Also, locally right here in this office, Olivia Bloomfield became a communications intern and streamed many of the Sunday Masses through the summer months. She was awesome. July was exciting because some ministries that had been on a hiatus in 2020 and 2021 were starting to come back. The Supper Club came back. Also, the men's ministry hosted Scott Weber talking about his conversion over some yummy meat-based dish. In August, the church welcomed seminarian Adrian Manessis to the parish. He's doing a pastoral year here and is studying English. In September, the long-awaited groundbreaking for the new outreach center took place. Mayor G.T. Bynum, Bishop David Condrilla, and a lot of special guests were present for that great event. Later that month, the church welcomed Mr. Jeff Cavins, popular Catholic author and evangelist, to the parish, he spoke about the Bible, and specifically the Great Adventure Bible Timeline series. In October, workers started to do demo in the old Beckerley Hall and start its transformation into the choir's music suite. Mary Fair, which had sold out in just minutes, really, um, it was a huge fundraiser for the school that took place in October, and then the Great Picnic was a parish-wide and neighborhood-wide event that took place also in October. The highlight of November was Advent by Candlelight, where the church welcomed Sister Mary Hannah Doak, the president of Bishop Kelly High School, to come and give a talk. Shauna Rocco also gave a talk that night. In December, the church welcomed Miss Sarah Coburn for, uh, to the parish. She gave a beautiful concert full of Christmas music. And we announced that Deacon Rich is retiring. Deacon Rich had served the parish for a very, very long time, and he finally retired. However, the very next day, he was back at 9 a.m. serving as a deacon at Mass. Deacon Rich, you're going to be missed, but we can't miss you too much because we're seeing you all the time. It's happy retirement. And then finally, the church prepared during a very, very cold final week of Advent for a beautiful celebration of Christmas Masses. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us in 2022, and we look forward to serving you and your people in 2023.